Hi everyone, my name is Matt, and let's paint this classic orc shaman Nazgob for Warhammer Fantasy. I'll paint him with some older, some newer, and some less conventional techniques. Maybe some you've heard of, and some maybe not. So let's grab our paint and get started. My model was missing the sword, so I replaced it with a spare plastic dagger. After cleaning and assembling the model, I gave it an undercoat of gray primer, followed by a heavy layer of white paint with my airbrush, concentrating the spray on the top and sides of the model. The result is a subtle, zenithal-style effect, with white on the raised areas and gray on the underside. Alternatively, you could prime the model with Wraithbone or Gray Sear sprays from Games Workshop and achieve great results too. I tend to prefer the airbrush because it gives me a much smoother surface. There are a ton of different ways out there to paint orc skin. I wanted to come up with a contrast paint recipe where the base coat could look good on its own for fast army painting, but also provide a foundation for further highlights. I began by mixing equal parts of contrast orc flesh and straken green. Contrast paint on its own is very transparent, and the dark colors especially can leave an uneven surface. The straken green is lightening the mix, thickening it, and increasing the opacity, all of which make the end result smoother in just one coat. If you're painting an army using a custom mix, it's a great idea to mix a whole pot of that color. Check out my video here about how I mixed a custom color for my Tyranids. With the skin layer base coated, I added some shading with a wash. Coelia green shade is a little too strong right out of the pot, so I diluted it with an equal amount of medium. When applying a wash, I want to apply it thoughtfully and try to control it. I allow it to pool in some of the recesses more than others. I'll wipe the brush off on a paper towel and soak up some wash if I feel like too much of it is in one area. This will make the end result look better and can help save time with highlighting later if you go that route too. At this stage you could call the skin finished. I want to go further with some highlights, so I'm doing that with Skarsnick Green. I thinned it with water into a glaze-like consistency. Remember, the thinner your paint is, the less of it you want on your brush. I'm applying some highlights on most of the raised and upward facing areas. The direction of the brush strokes matters here. The brush will deposit more paint wherever it last touches the model, so make sure to end the brush stroke on a raised area. I wanted to vary the skin tone a little. So I mixed some Kislev flesh into the green, and painted this on his lips and earlobe. Just like the last highlight, I thinned the paint into a glaze-like consistency. Next I highlighted those areas with Flayed One flesh, focusing on the top edges and folds. Then I mixed in some white for a few final highlights. We'll leave that for now and highlight the rest of the skin. I mixed some white into the Skarsnick green and applied some soft glaze-like highlights on the top edges of the skin. I wanted to push the highlights just a little further, so I added in more white and painted the topmost edges and corners. Next I painted the staff and bones with Skeleton Horde. Try to keep the paint even, allow it to pool in some of the deep recesses, but try to keep the top edges lighter and smooth. It will help with the highlights later. I went back to the skin now and applied some glazes with Magos Purple. The lips and ear needed some more warmth, and Magos Purple works great for subtle glazes. Now back to the bones. I wanted to deepen the shadows and add a little more color, so I applied some shading with Targor Rage Shade. 
Skeleton Horde is a nice color, but I feel like it's too yellow on its own. Targor Rage Shade has a red-violet leaning hue, which provides some nice warmth. While the shade's drying, I went in and painted his eye, first with a dot of red, leaving a dark outline in the recesses, followed by a light orange dot in the center. The shade I painted on the skin earlier made the recess dark enough, but you could apply some black paint first if it needs to be darker. Now to highlight the bones, starting off with a glaze of bone white. I'm looking for areas where the skeleton horde base coat looks uneven, and I'm using the glaze to smooth out the larger surfaces. I thinned some off-white and highlighted the edges of the bones and the carved details on the staff. For most of the areas I painted a hard edge highlight, but in some sections I thinned the paint a little more and softened the edges. If you want to learn more about some of the techniques I use, check out this video here. Now for the robes. I wanted to give him red robes, but I wanted the red to be darker and less vibrant. I'm using a familiar mix of three parts Flesh Terror's red and one part Black Templar. This is the same mix I used for my Tyranids, and you can find out more about mixing it in this video here. The first coat looks a little spotty, so I'm going to smooth it out by applying a second, slightly thinner layer. The robes are looking good now, so it's time to highlight with corn red. I thinned down the paint with water, and I'm applying a glaze style highlight. Remember that the thinner your paint is, the less you want on your brush, and also remember that the brush will deposit more paint where it last touches the model. So I'm painting towards the folds and where I want the highlights to be. Once I have some softer highlights established, then I'll go in and focus on the sharper edges. Before I highlight the red further, I want to paint a freehand pattern with bale or brown. I'm painting some triangle shapes all over the edges of the fabric. I'm not too worried about the shapes being precise and even just working all the way around the model and making them different sizes. With the triangle shapes down, I highlighted all the edges with Averlin Sunset. Next I mixed some white into the Averland Sunset and painted one last highlight, focused only on the edges of the fabric. Now it's time to highlight the rest of the robes. I wanted to keep the red more subdued, so rather than using a bright red for the next highlight, I mixed in some light orange. A wet palette really simplifies the mixing process and makes it so much easier. At this stage, the model is lacking a really dark value, so I decided to paint the other fabric a warm black color, beginning with a coat of rattling grime. One layer wasn't dark enough, so when the first was dry, I applied a second. The fabric is looking nice and dark now, and I applied a highlight in two stages with storm vermin fur. I began with a soft glaze highlight and worked my way around the model. 
Since a glaze is transparent, that means the base coat is still showing through a little, and that is effectively creating a mid-tone that's somewhere between the base coat color and storm vermin fur. When that was dry, I used a little less water so the paint was stronger, and applied this on the edges. Now the fabric has three tones on it. The near black base coat, the mid-tone where the glaze was applied, and the opaque highlight on the edge. Then I mixed some off-white into the storm vermin fur and picked out the very edges of the cloth. So here is one of the biggest problems with contrast paint. No matter how carefully you paint everything, you're going to get some spillover. Since contrast paint is transparent, it needs a really light undercoat in order to show up, which means we would have to touch up those areas with white, wraithbone, or gray sear first. Really light colors take several layers too, so it's not a fast process. In fact, it ends up taking a lot longer than other methods. That's where I believe it's better and faster to switch over to opaque paints for base coats. I want to have two different colors for the leather, and for the first I'm going to base coat with XV88. With that base coat dry, I painted a shade using Agarose Dunes. Contrast paint can be used to shade as well. It doesn't just have to be used for base coats. Experiment and try out different combinations. You might find something new that you like. With the shade dry, I went back to the base coat color and applied some glaze highlights. Just like the cloth areas before, thin glazes of paint built up slowly around the edges and folds. Next I mixed some off-white into the brown and highlighted the edges and topmost sections. I wanted the other leather color to be darker, and I started with a base coat of Mornfang Brown. Next I shaded those areas with Wildwood Contrast Paint. This is a very strong, dark paint, so try to keep the layer thin and avoid too much pooling. With the Wildwood shade dry, I highlighted all the edges with Mornfang Brown. I want this leather to look pretty dark, so I'm not going to do any glaze highlights. I'll just highlight on the edges. Then I mixed some off-white into the Mornfang Brown and highlighted the top edges and corners. Now on to the metallics. I base coated the steel areas with iron hand steel. Make sure the base coat is clean and solid. You may need two or three thin layers. Next I applied an equal parts mix of Null Noil and Agrax Earth Shade. The goal with this layer is to be thin and even. I'm not trying to shade the metallics, but to dull down the shine. We'll create some deep shading next. For the deep shading, I like to use black paint. I thinned it with two or three parts water, and with very little paint on the brush, painted in one section of the blade. I like to blend to black on one side of the blade, and go in the opposite direction on the adjacent facet. It's not very realistic, so to speak, but it can look pretty effective at such a small scale. 
For the highlights, I went back with some thinned down iron hand steel, and I applied some light glazes on the opposite sides of the black shading. With metallics, we can't highlight all the way up to white, so we need to shade darker to compensate for that. And since metallics rely on the light itself to reflect the brightest highlights, that's why it's important to dull down the other areas, so only the highlights reflect light. Finally, I used some thinned Stormhost Silver and picked out the very edges. I also added a few scratches here and there. Be selective though, and add those scratches sparingly. A little can go a long way. I base coated the brass areas with Rune Lord Brass. Just like with the silver, it's important to get a smooth, even finish, so apply two or three layers. Next I shaded the brass with Fire Slayer Flesh. This is a nice reddish brown color, and it's stronger than most shade paints, so it creates some pretty dark shadows. Then I layered back up with Rune Lord Brass, making sure to avoid the crevices. Next I picked out the edges with Stormhost Silver. Finally, I watered down some Griffhound Orange and applied a very thin glaze over the brass areas. Since the edges were highlighted with silver paint, a glaze like this can be really effective for bringing some color back into the metals. It's really easy to overdo this though, so be careful with it. I picked out the lip and earrings with Retributor Armor. Then I highlighted the edges with Stormhost Silver. On details as small as this, I'll go straight into highlights and I won't worry about shading. And finally I glazed the gold with a thin layer of aggro stones. This brings in a little yellow color and helps tone down the highlights. I wanted to create a glowing kind of effect on the staff, and I figured purple would make a nice contrast to all the other colors on the model. I began by painting some thin glazes of Magos purple around all the gem areas and on the gems as well. When that was dry, I applied another layer a little closer to the gem, and repeated this process until I felt the color was rich enough. Next I mixed a little bit of Luxion purple into the Magos purple and painted the top half of each gem. If you don't have Luxion purple, any dark purple or blue would work just as well. Next I used a little light pink to highlight the bottom sections of the gems. In this case it's Emperor's Children with a little bit of white mixed in. And finally, I painted some reflections with white. I painted all the claws with thinned black paint, and then when that was dry, I base coated them with Xandri dust, making sure to leave a thin black outline. I highlighted the claws with bone white by making thin, tapered lines that start narrow near the base of the claw and widen closer to the end. Finally, I used pure white and followed the same lines as before, but concentrated the highlight near the end. Now it's time for the base, and on such an iconic model, it would really be a crime if I didn't give him a classic goblin green base. So first I applied a layer of wood glue to the base, and then dipped it in fine sand. When the glue was dry, I base coated the sand with thinned goblin green paint. 
This is an old color, and if you don't have it, Warboss Green is a pretty close match. Then I dry brushed the base with Sunburst Yellow, which is another old color, and if you don't have that, Phalanx Yellow is pretty close. And here we have the finished Orc Shaman, Nazgob. This has been a really fun model to paint, especially mixing different greens and coming up with new recipes for Orc skin. I absolutely love the old Warhammer models, and I'm really hyped for the release of the Old World. Are you excited about the Old World too? What armies are you planning? And what kind of Old World painting content would you like to see on my channel? Let me know in a comment down below. I have tons of old models, and I'd love to make some more videos about them. Well that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy painting.